trailer we have a 1970 AAR Cuda and well as you can see she's pretty rough she's got the quarter panel I don't really know the quarter panel shot on this side literally then on this side let's see what we got here this side you know pretty rough we picked her up yesterday and we're still trying to track down the motor as of right now and everything she was wrecked in like 70 to 72 AAR a uh Three, I mean, yeah, 360, three two-barrel carbs. As you can see, needs frame rails, but we're gonna fix her. I know that kind of sounds crazy, but there's only 2,500 of these, and well, they're big money cars. I think they are at least. And I've always wanted a Cuda because, well, they're neat. On the inside here, we have floor pan delete kit, and they cut all that out to pull the motor back in the day. Over there, there's somewhere in here, there's a, uh, chipmunk or a rat crawling around he's real fast i never can see him real good bullet holes everywhere roofs caved in we need quarter panels floor panel trunk pan's not terrible but well as you can imagine this side you can put your hand through and this is still got some original paint so we might can save half of it i want to save as much original sheet metal as possible but all this is gonna have to go Gonna try to maybe jack that up, pull some of this out. The inner wheel houses look good. On this side, they're not bent up. There's some bullet holes in them, which is sad. The frame rail's solid, but it's got a bullet hole. Doesn't seem to be bent or have any real rust in it, so that's savable. Gas tank has a bullet hole in it. She sat in the woods for over 50 years, so you can imagine she got shot a few times. This door, we can save it, but we can't save the skin. Well, I could probably make a skin, but it's easier just to buy one. And everything else, we're basically to save the firewall, uh, the rockers, because they're solid, the door jams if we can. That size door jams better. And as much original sheet metal as we can to make it, you know, as much of the original car left as possible. And hopefully we can find the motor. It's supposed to have been put in the truck back in the 70s. The people that owned this car, uh, his son wrecked it. He owned the Dodge dealership and Supposedly they put it in a 1970s or something truck. And I hope it's still around here so we can get that 360 and everything and put it back in, I mean 340. Yeah, 340, I was wrong. I think it's a 346 barrel. I may be wrong. I'm not a real, real big Mopar guy and it's easy to get some two or three mixed up. So we're gonna go ahead, clean all the dirt out of here, hopefully find maybe some more parts. We don't have the fender tag. I'm hoping maybe somehow it's in the bottom of this car. I highly doubt it, but I dug around in here and we found that and a few other things. Just gonna get the dirt out of it and get it inside and see what we I got. I think this is as good a place as any to cut, so we're just gonna start right about here or wherever and see what we get. decided it didn't want to record us pulling the floor pans out but we drilled out all the spot welds over here we accidentally made a boo-boo with the chisel but we did find out we're going to have to replace the torsion bar cross member it's all rusted out down there that one's that frame rail is going away we were going to save that one but it's got a kink in it also we found out that the rear frame rails have a lot of corrosion in them right there because i knocked a hole in the floor so that's going to have to be replaced Wish we could save more original sheet metal, but to make it safe, we're gonna have to replace this stuff. We got them ordered, so hopefully here pretty soon we'll have them. We're gonna go ahead and pull the dash out of the car because we need a new one of them. The dash pad just rusted it out. We've been using this torch here so we don't burn, the, not, not burn, but break the bolts off in there. You give her a little bit of heat and normally they just 
come right out. This one might not do what we want it to do. There we go. She's coming loose now. Go to the other side, loosen it up and see what we can do. We are still attached somewhere. Well, in multiple places. That. Now we got a dash at it. She is now free and full of rats. Rats made it a nice little home in here. We got, oh, we even got some bones it's been chewing on. Uh, I think that's a turtle. I'm not sure what that is. Oh no, that's a, that's a deer foot. Yeah, that is a deer foot. You gotta love pack rats. So now that we've got everything out from underneath the firewall, except for a few things, we measured. She's about a quarter inch off. That way she's been pushed. We're going to fix that later. Right now we're going to go to the front aprons and undo these. We've already started drilling the spot welds out. and As you can see, there's like 9 million of them. We've got most of them out. I think there's one here and one more underneath this. About to pull that. Then we'll jump to this side. Somehow back in the day, the guys that tore the engine out of this old girl got the this off of here and didn't even drill the spot welds out i don't even think it had a spot weld through there which is crazy because this side did that frame rail off there. So I've now been heating this torsion bar for about 15 minutes because it's still stuck in here. Apparently she's rust welded real nice and good. I don't know if we could run out of propane before the bar comes undone or not. Give her a try now. We're doing something now. She comes out. Three? Nope. Which of this? Ooh. She's a little warm still. Maybe we got her free now. <laughs> One down. One to go. <laughs> so we now have the car sitting on our little rolly jig. And as you can see, she's not sitting level. That side's about a half an inch lower on the frame rail since it's bent down. And this side's sitting about, uh, up about one and a half to two inches. Reason being is a lot of it is coming from this quarter panel here since he, it's crunching munched. It's pulling this down, which in turn pulls this door jam. We are changing this door jam here because I don't know how straight it is really. 
and it's got a bunch of bullet holes in it that'll be a pain in the butt to patch and it's rusted out down there but since we can't get to these spot welds here we can get to them but we can't get to here we're going to drill a hole in here cold chisel this cut it off down and once we pull this quarter panel hopefully 90 percent of that will go away but i'm not expecting all of it to since the car's been like that for 50 years Should be low enough to bend her down. There we go. And that's why the shop floor is always dirty. As soon as you cut into these, you get all that nice stuff. I can scare it off there. And she's free. Right, we have that quarter panel off. You can now see that down there solid. We have a dent in this wheelhouse. This piece is garbage. We could probably patch it, but it's bent. Down through here, this wheelhouse is bent. The bottom ends of it is rusted off but we can fix that trunk floor we already knew it was bad here on this side you can really see how much it was pushed up this way and now we get to here this is what's holding us up in the front i was hoping the quarter panel would release that i didn't really pay attention to how much of this was bent now once we cut this with a sawzall since there's no fixing this with all the bullet holes in it and how bent it is it should set the car down in the front and then we're going to check everything, see how much that fixed everything. Now, since I cut that, there's about an inch gap, maybe three quarters of an inch there from it letting that tension off of it because that's attached to the door frame, which is attached to the rocker panel. So we're going to start, we're going to move this over. That frame rail is about an inch further tucked down and try to get her level and start tearing some more parts off of here because there's a lot more we got to throw away, now sadly. To the point where it kind of gets a little complicated. At least there's a lot more work that goes into it. Instead of just cutting stuff apart, we're going to start putting it back together. And the main thing you have to remember is each frame rail has to be exactly where the other one is. So this one here, we have the factory measurements from the center of the torsion bar uh, holder, whatever you want to call it. It's eight and a half inches. From the outside of it, I mean, it's eight and a quarter inches from the center, and it's seven and a half from the outside. So we have to set this one like that. We have already set this one. It's not where it's gonna live permanently because I'm sure it's towed in a little bit at the front. We're just gonna do that by measuring from the outside of this to here and we are nowhere near where we need to be. We're about an inch off. That might give you guys a little bit better of a view. We're now, this torque box, it has a piece underneath it and that's been our problem because it overlaps this frame rail. You can see this has kind of been up. It'll go right back down. I did that a minute ago, at least part of that moving this thing around. And we have to get that underneath this piece. Well, at least the one underneath it. And that's becoming our problem. And we succeeded. It's now underneath it where it needs to be. The next question is, 
if this bracket's going to fit where it's supposed to because we're nine miles off. And that is the fun thing about reproduction parts. As you can see here, this is what we're working with. We have about a half an inch gap. Well, about a, yeah, probably about a half an inch gap at the bottom, three eighths inch gap at the top and across the very bottom, about a half inch to three eighths. We now have to move this in and measure from here to here and do some cross measurements to make sure we're getting it where it needs to be. I have to say it's probably doing with this torque box here. We straightened it out. It wasn't even really bent. It was mainly the frame rail interfering, but we straightened it out a little bit more. We still have to clean that rust up in there, but we'll get that done. And we're gonna have to see if it needs to come out some more or what's going on because it should be fitting perfectly. We now have our new little tool we made. We took one of these pieces that goes to a port of power and we centered the tape measure perfectly in it. It's fit, it fits flush in there and we also taped it just for good measure. We're using it to measure from the, uh, I'll call them dowel holes, whatever you wanna call them, center to center to make sure each frame rail is correct. We now have the right hand side, pasture side frame rail where it's supposed to be. So that's a plus. And now we're measuring to check this one and see where we're at. We are currently exactly 50, about 57 and a quarter to the center on this bolt, and we are supposed to be at 57 and a half. So we still have to pull it this way some more and turn the bottom in to make sure that the frame rail and K member fit. We get quite a bit of movement by just doing this, but we're going to use this clamp down there to try and hold it together a little better. That may or may not have helped us out some. We put in this bar right here because we don't have the K member or a radiator support. This frame rail is half an inch over now. That one's where it's supposed to live. We've got it tacked in the back back there to hold the back from sliding over. Because that's what we did last time instead of moving it, pushed it that way. We're going to pull it out. We have it level. With the other frame rail, we have the car leveled up. So we're ready basically to tack this into place once we get it where it's supposed to live. And just like that. It's officially tied into the torque box. The other side we tied in earlier, they're where they need to be. And now since it's tied in here and we already went ahead and tied it in the back and remeasured, we should be able to go through here, put all our plug welds in and start laying some floor pans. Now finally the part where we kind of get it to make it look like a car again. Clip it in there. You gotta get right behind that. If you don't, it's pain in the bullet. There. I think I accomplished that properly. Now this one, I'm not sure about. Floor pan is now in there solid. I went ahead and put these screws down this side here, pulled it to where it's supposed to be. Up front, it needs just a little bit of adjustment, and we have to secure it across the transmission cross member. But before we tie it down at the back, real solid, uh, we have to get this pan and this pan in because that sets the depth for the tow boards for the rear seat. We're now gonna remove all these spot welds, remove this piece here, and take this frame rail off because it's literally shot, rusted out, and it's no good. Remove the rear bumper.
these are frame rails now off there. We're gonna remove the traction bar. And as you can see, this bolt's already hand uh, loose. I'm sure they were gonna take it out of this car 50 years ago when it was wrecked. Luckily, they left it in here. frame rail in there now it's just mocked up uh in next video we'll weld that in there we'll get the floor pan back here put in and we're going to sandblast everything because i'm sure people are asking about that we've cleaned everywhere we're welding so we don't have to worry about rust in there but we're going to sandblast everything primer it and we're going to paint the back side of all this before we put the quarter panels on all this we're going to put the roof structure in so we can get to it paint the back side of it so it'll be better than factory same way with firewall door jams all that stuff we're going to get done that may not be done in next video, but we will get it done. And we're going to at least be test fitting quarter panels by the end of next video, I think. But thank you guys for watching. And I'm sure a lot of people thought this was a joke. I was actually fixing this car, but she ain't that rough. And I'd like to fix something a lot of people wouldn't try fixing. And for everyone, for Will It Runs, I'm still doing that. I just thought we'd do some restoration content because there's a lot of people asking about it. And we're still doing the 44 truck. We're waiting on the rings for it. They should be here the 16th and a few other vehicles. I'll give you guys updates on them as parts arrive because for some reason getting parts anymore takes forever. Also, this will be a will it run here pretty soon. We're gonna get her going. She's been off the road for like 30 years or more. But thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.